Before I started surfing full time, I was a journalist specialising in health and wellbeing. I pursued the nitty gritties of the body and how to attain incredible wellness for over a decade. And in doing so, found myself in Namibia, Okinawa, the USA and Greece, just to name a few. Being lucky enough to interview the world's greatest researchers, doctors and philosophers, I'm now armed personally with a great sustainable strategy to looking after and even improving my own health. Today, I want to share these strategies with you from one non-health nut to another. If you're like me nowadays and want to be as healthy as possible without having to try too hard, then this video is for you. This video is brought to you by kalebrock.com, where you can find links to access my in-depth work on well-being, such as my book, The Gut Healing Protocol and The Art of Probiotic Nutrition, and my documentary films, The Gut Movie and The Longevity Film. I highly encourage you to check them out via the link in the description below, and we'll give you guys a special discount code to use at the end of this clip. We're uh, driving into what's meant to be one of the best national parks in Australia. Uh, just doing a lot of non-ocean based activities at the moment whilst my knee is healing up. I'm pretty excited though, it's meant to be absolutely stunning. During my time as a health journalist, I realised the most sustainable approaches to wellness were the easiest approaches to comprehend and apply. In that spirit, I'm going to break down today's video into three categories. Nutrition, what you eat and drink. Exercise, how you move. And mission, why you do it. Potentially the most important category. You are made up of everything that you consume. So this is obviously an important category to chat about. Now, Emma is a dietitian, so I'll let her explain our dietary approach in a nutshell. There's a ton of different diets out there and some of them work, but many of them don't. The approach that I found that works the best for sustainability and ease is just a whole foods diet. Did it grow in the ground once? Did it run around or did it swim in the ocean? And what have they done to it since? These are some guiding questions that you can ask yourself about your food to help you decide whether it's good for you or not. If we had to label our approach, we would call it a whole foods diet, which makes it really simple to follow. But there are some guidelines within that realm that we adhere to as well. Whilst visiting the longevity cultures, I realized that a lot of the food that these people were consuming was seasonal, local, organic, and it was from a whole food source. So that's generally what we try and uh, use to, to build our meals around. And that's what we're having tonight, rice chicken. Mostly plants, a little bit of animal protein in there. It's a really nice balanced meal and pretty typical. One important factor around our dietary approach is flexibility. Travelling to some of the remotest parts of Australia this past year has shown us that not all shops or towns have seasonal, local, organic produce. And we accept that that's okay and simply do the best we can with what's available. <laughs> when it comes to water, the most important thing for us is making sure it's really clean and hopefully remineralized, which is why we use this incredible filtration system. Ideally for me, we'd be getting spring water, but this is the absolute best we can do whilst on the road. And aside from the odd kombucha and the odd coffee, and of course our morning hot chocolate, that's pretty much the only liquid we drink. Exercise is an interesting topic, especially for people like Emma and I who are pretty rarely seen in the gym or running in the street. I do think that exercise plays a crucial role in health and well-being, or more specifically, movement does. But I think our concept of exercise is what stops a lot of people from achieving great results. 
Exercise has conventionally been associated with something you don't want to do. It's treated like a punishment almost, and that's something I've never incorporated into my life. Exercise needs to be goal specific. Literally, what do you want to get out of it? And if it's just general health and well-being and longevity, then you may not need to go and smash yourself at the gym. I think the best exercise, in my opinion, is inherent in an active, enjoyable hobby that you can participate in. For me, surfing is a lifesaver. It impacts a variety of energy systems and fitness components and gets me in the ocean every day. You all know how much energy that surfing burns because if you're surfing a lot, you're a ravenous human. Now, I never surf for exercise purposes alone. I surf because I love it. And that is why active hobbies that you love are the most powerful forms of exercise that you can incorporate into your life. If you don't surf, even simple movements such as walking a dog, yoga, swimming, gymnastics, whatever it is that gets you moving is something you should prioritize. My goals are to surf at a high level until I die. In the next few years, I wanna push my surfing, hopefully to an elite level. And as a result, I've had to come to terms with a little extra fitness training. Although I tend to really dislike the gym, I've had to learn to like it in a way because my goals, which extend far beyond just general health and well-being, require that I do so. In the van, I've not done a lot, especially with my run of injuries this year, but the last couple of months, I've resolved to get back into it in order to prevent these injuries from occurring and take my surfing to another level. I have to admit, there is something nice and addictive about lifting heavy weights and doing dynamic training in the gym. And yes, there are huge benefits to doing it, but as far as I saw in the longevity cultures, nobody was walking around with ripped abs and bulging biceps. These people were just normal. They had a tremendously active lifestyle, but they never worked out. And they lived a long, happy and healthy life, which is food for thought. For me, this is probably the most important topic of this video. Mission, purpose, vision. Having an overarching mission that guides you through life is such an asset to your health and well-being. Not only does it provide a source of inspiration and motivation, it also helps you move forward with clarity. You're equally as certain about what to say no to in life as much as what you say yes to. <laughs> Wow. Can you believe it? We're the only ones here. It looks so pretty. Yes, it does. It's a bit cold. Mission is something I always check in on within myself, and most of the time this occurs whilst I'm out surfing. Sitting in the ocean for me is probably the clearest space I find to do this, and being able to listen to my soul, if you will, and honour its call is something I'm very conscious of. For me, mission involves a few categories. Personal what I want to achieve and who I want to become, relationships, how I want to contribute to other people's lives with an emphasis on close relationships, the planet, how I can make the world a better place than when I entered it. These three pillars create a strong goalpost for me to move forward in life with and contribute in a huge way to my sense of fulfillment, happiness and life satisfaction. The three areas we've talked about today support each other. This multifaceted and symbiotic relationship is reflective, I think, of the wider experience of the planet and the universe, a delicate balance and constantly changing interplay of forces, creating this beautiful dance called life as we see it. From the zoomed out perspective that we see from a space station to the microscopic vision we see inside someone's microbiome, I find it endlessly fascinating and it's the reason why I spent 10 years documenting it as a health journalist and filmmaker. You can check out that work over at kalebrock.com and as a thank you for watching today, you can get 50% off my books for a limited time only by using the discount code BROCCOLI. I'll see you guys soon.